So my name is Yipeng Huang. Uh, I'm a PhD student in computer science at Columbia University. I am in my uh, sixth year. And at my time at PhD, I've been working at, on a project called Analog Computing for Modern Scientific Computation. So Analog Computing is actually a pretty old idea. It dates back to the mid-20th century um, when early computer designs uh, used analog circuits to do certain types of simulations, certain types of models. Um, we're thinking it, it's worthwhile to revisit this model of computation because we know that there are limitations coming up with Moore's Law scaling. So we need to explore alternative ways of doing computation and find suitable applications on top of which we can build uh, whole architectures and whole systems. So analog, by analog I mean that the values in the computer are analog valued. This is in contrast to the zeros and ones that you find in conventional digital computers. That's one aspect. The other aspect is that in our computer, the signals, the numbers, change continuously in time. So it's a constantly flowing from one num number to another. And that's in contrast to all com digital computers which have to operate step by step, like on a clock. The first part of our, my PhD, we were working on creating a chip which revives analog computing um, using modern integrated circuit technology. Um, this was really fruitful, so we found that because you use analog circuits on the chip, it dissipates much less heat and much, uses much less power than conventional digital chips. That's one big advantage. And the other big advantage is because it operates in continuous time, this chip is able to do very strange types of algorithms that you wouldn't be able to do in a digital chip or a digital computer which has to operate in step by step. People have explored doing uh, analog computation in the context of neural networks. So what they would do is the neural networks the neurons would be described as some kind of analog model and they'd build a chip to do, be able to do that. So in that sense, analog computing in some ways exists already. Um, as for our work, it really depends. So it, the success of our work and the long-term uh, realness of our work uh, depends on if we're able to keep putting, pushing digital techniques farther. And if, you know, in some senses, digital techniques can't keep scaling, then that's the opportunity for these alternative methods of computing to step in. Um, so I joined my PhD as a computer engineering student at Columbia uh, for my undergrad. And uh, that's a very unique major in that it's half electrical engineering and half computer science. So training in both was a requirement to be able to do this kind of low-level hardware uh, engineering task. Um, and in terms of interest, it's really fascinating because it's really uh, a unique project in that we touch hardware and very nitty-gritty details of the hardware, but at the same time, we have to look at what are the applications of, the, of this chip. And so we're looking at you know, what are the problems that they have to solve and what's difficult inside it and try to find a mapping between the problem space and down to the hardware. Um, so it's, like a, it's a very multidisciplinary kind of uh, project. A uh, really memorable moment was, so we worked on this as a team of two students, me and uh, ele an electrical engineering student, a PhD student, his name is Ning Guo. He graduated last year. And uh, the moment was when uh, our chip finally came back from the factory. And we were in the lab that day to bring it up, to start it up for the first time and see if either we can continue the project or, you know, we were basically mothballed because it doesn't work. And uh, we spent the whole afternoon and really act through the evening and late into the night just to get it to start up and show the first signs of life. And as it turns out, we didn't really document things really properly. And so it took us time to get it to a state of being, you know, working. And finally, when it just like toggled one small signal that we knew was under our control, we knew that, okay, at least with that working, you know, there's other things that are probably working. So we're good to go home. Um, that was a really moment of relief for us. And that's a unique aspect of doing uh, chip research, which is it's high risk in the sense that uh, to do this kind of research, you invest a lot of time and a lot of, uh, a lot of years and a lot of money and research money into prototyping something. But once the prototype is ready and you show that it works, then it's, it's, uh, it opens up like your research to try different things on it. It's like 
once you have the hammer, you can bang on all kinds of nails um, that you see.